Good Sunday morning, brothers and sisters. 1 Peter 1, verses 6-9 through 9 says, In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing, you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Spurgeon once asked, Can a Christian greatly rejoice while he is in heaviness? Yes, most assuredly he can. Mariners tell us that there are some parts of the sea where there is a strong current upon the surface going one way, but that down in the depths there is a strong current running the other way. Two seas do not meet and interfere with one another, but one stream of water on the surface is running in one direction and another below is in an opposite direction. Now, the Christian is a lot like that. On the surface, there is a stream of heaviness rolling with dark waves. But down in the depths, there is a strong undercurrent of great rejoicing that is always flowing there. Now, greatly rejoicing is an intense, expressive term that means to be supremely and abundantly happy, a happiness that is not based on circumstances or superficial feelings. A Christian who is persecuted for righteousness in this life will have overflowing joy in the future because of his reward. In his final beatitude, Jesus encouraged all those who would suffer for his name, promising them that, Blessed are you when men cast insults at you and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely on account of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward in heaven is great. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Matthew 5, verse 11 through 12. Verse 7 says that the genuineness of your faith being more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones says, Christian people are generally at their best when they are in the furnace of affliction and being persecuted and tried. Trials and tribulations are very good for us in that they help us to know ourselves better than we knew ourselves before. Trial is not only to approve, but to improve. The genuine element in the faith of Peter's readers would be proven by a process similar to that of metal refining and ultimately would be found to something more precious than even these precious metals. We must expect trial because trial is the element of faith. Faith without trial is like a diamond uncut, the brilliance of which has never been seen. A fish without water or a bird without air is faith without trial. We may surely expect that our faith will be tested. A weak faith may appear to be strong when friends are true, the body is healthy, and the business is profitable but a truly strong faith clings to the Lord's promises and relies on His faithfulness when loved ones leave, health departs, and dark clouds obscure the future. Evangelist D.L. Moody once said, quote, Trust in yourself, and you are doomed to disappointment. Trust in your friends, and they will die and leave you. But trust in God, and you will never be confounded in time or eternity. Trials are the soil in which faith can flourish. Warren Worsby aptly describes the process of divine testing, writing, When God puts his own people into the furnace, he keeps his eye on the clock and his hand on the thermostat. He knows how long and how much. If we rebel, he may have to reset the clock. But if we submit, he will not permit us to suffer one minute too long. The important thing is that we learn the lesson he wants to teach us and that we bring glory to him alone. We may question why 
he does it to begin with or why he doesn't turn down the heat or even turn it off. But our questions are only evidences of unbelief. Job 23 verse 10 is the answer, but he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. Gold does not fear the fire. The furnace can only make the gold purer and brighter. Verse 8 of 1 Peter chapter 1 says, Whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing, you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory. Christians rejoice despite trials and suffering, have faith in someone they have never seen, and stake their lives on promises. Why? Because they know the Lord. 2 Corinthians 5, 6 through 10 says, So we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather, to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well-pleasing to him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Hebrews 11, verse 6, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Have any of you ever met God face to face? I know I haven't. We must have faith. But even though we have never seen Jesus, it does not mean we can't know and love him every day. Greatly rejoice in the Greek, agaleo, is the same verb Peter used in verse 6, picturing one so filled that they feel like skipping around jumping for joy. Agaleo depicts jumping and shouting for joy which cannot be contained. Peter is not saying that we should rejoice over the circumstances, but that we can rejoice in the midst of them by focusing on Jesus Christ and our future with him. Joy resides in the unseen Jesus, the source of joy. Future hope fuels present joy, independent of fiery trials. Every trial we experience can help us learn something new and wonderful about our Savior. If Abraham had refused the trial in Genesis 22, he would have never come to know God as Jehovah Jireh, his provider. Joy, then, is the deep down sense of well-being that abides in the heart of the person who knows all is well between himself and the Lord. It is not an experience that comes from favorable circumstances, but even occurs when those circumstances are the most painful and severe. Listen to John 16. Truly, truly, I say to you that you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will be turned into joy. Whenever a woman is in travail, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she gives birth to the child, she remembers the anguish no more for joy that a child has been born into the world. Therefore you too now have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice, and no one takes your joy away from you. Lastly, in verse 9 it says, Receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Now receiving or obtaining indicates the tension between what we received when we accepted Christ, what we already possess as believers, and what we will yet receive when Christ returns. We receive salvation when we accepted Jesus as our Savior, yet our salvation will not be complete until Jesus Christ returns and makes everything new. In the meantime, we continue growing in the Christian life and experiencing more and more of the blessings of salvation. As we continue to believe and rejoice, we also continue toward maturity in Christ and to our promised salvation. There is really no reason for believers to lose their joy when they can tap into all the present and future spiritual realities mentioned in this passage. Present proven faith, fellowship with Christ, and deliverance. 
and a protected future inheritance and promised honor. As Jesus assured the apostles, These things I have spoken to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be made full. John 15, verse 11. In conclusion, it is not enough that we long for heaven during times of suffering, for anybody can do that. What Peter urged his readers to do was exercise love, faith, and rejoicing so that they might experience some of the glory of heaven in the midst of their suffering now. God bless.